What is up, all of my horror fanatics out there? Welcome back to Late Night Frats. I'm Late Night Frats horror leader, the Jay Sloan or Jordan, back here to do another video for you. And as always, guys, I want to thank everyone for tuning in this evening. Now, last week we did horror battles, and before I go any further into the theme that we're going to be doing for you this week, I just want to explain why I missed my video last week. And there was also a few other videos missed as well, um, but I'm going to explain why I missed. So, Monday is my day. Unfortunately, I, don't, I was unable to make my video on Monday, and I asked Mike if he could trade days with me, and he did. And I thought I would be free Saturday to do it. Unfortunately, after work Friday, I ended up not coming home Friday night and not getting home till very late Saturday, having every intention to make my video. I passed out, woke up uh, about 11.30 and could not make my video in time. So for that, I do apologize to all the viewers out there. And that is the reason why I didn't make my video last week. But we are back. We are on schedule this week. Uh, there should be no missed videos this week. Hopefully, I'm you know keeping my fingers crossed here that there will be no missed videos this week and a full week of content for for you guys from Late Night Frights. So, uh, so this week we are doing our uh, slasher theme redo for 2015. We've done this ever since the channel was created by myself back in the day years ago. Uh, we did one for 2014 for last year, and we're doing one for this year for 2015. Now, the film that I chose to review, uh, it, it is a slasher film. It can be looked at in a bunch of different ways, though, not just a slasher movie. Uh, a thriller, sexual thriller, uh, a lot of suspense elements to this film as well. Uh, I look at it as a slasher because it is a uh, antagonist, a unknown person or you know unknown killer, stalking and killing victims and that has uh, definitely a lot of that within this film and it's a film from 1980 and it is Dressed to Kill Do you find me attractive? Of course Would you want to sleep with me? Yes Then why don't you? Because I love my wife and it isn't worth jeopardizing my marriage. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been so rude. Thank you for picking up. Mm. Talk to her first. Brian De Palma, the master of the macabre, who shocked audiences everywhere with Sisters, Carrie, Obsession, and The Fury, now invites you to a showing of the latest fashion in murder. <coughs> dressed to Kill. Michael Caine, Angie Dickinson, Nancy Allen. Dressed to Kill. Murder made to order. Okay, so Dress to Kill is made in 1980. This one is directed by Brian De Palma, who is a very well-known director. He has directed tons of great films over the years. Too many, in fact, that I can't name them all now. But I will go over a few. Carrie, an absolute classic. The Phantom of the Paradise, love that film as well. The Untouchables, not a horror film, but a great film nonetheless. Scarface, absolute classic. I mean, that is his... Uh, that's his record. I mean, that's that's a lot of films that he's done, but there's so many more. I think he's directed 39 films, maybe, in the 30s, so there's so many more. There's so many that I can't go over, but let's just say he is a very well-known and respected director. 
Uh, this film is starring Michael Caine, Angie Dickinson, and Nancy Allen. And you guys know how we do things here on Late Night Frights. Since this is a single review, I will be spending a little bit more time talking about it than I would in a battle. I actually have battled this film on Late Night Frights a long time ago. I don't even remember what I battled it against. But I do know that there was a battle. But I finally get the chance to spend a little bit more time talking about the plot, uh, talking about the acting, the directing, the feeling and vibe of the film, and uh, just giving you my overall thoughts and opinions on Duress to Kill. So let's talk a little bit about the plot. So the plot follows a character named Dr. Robert Elliott, who is played by Michael Caine, a younger Michael Caine, uh, you know, one that I was not used to seeing upon first viewing of the film. And he pretty much, he's a therapist, and he talks to a lot of older women, you know, elderly women. I wouldn't say granny, but, you know, elderly, 40s, 50s. And uh, they kind of go over their sexual desires with him, most of them do. And it starts with one woman who actually cheats on her husband, and she confesses this to Michael Caine's character, tells him that she wants to sleep with him, or asks him if he would sleep with her. Uh, and, you know, there's some tension there, and you can tell that he is a therapist, and he's not really allowed to do that sort of thing, uh, but he has these sexual feelings towards some of these patients that he's treating. Uh, it's a little back and forth, you know, with the uh, sexual attraction. Uh, that's a main, uh, a main element within this film, I guess I should say, suspense and sexual attraction and sex in general. Um, so, uh, he, you know, tells her he can't do it, she's his patient, they, that he, you know, he can't do it. Uh, very shortly, she actually dies. They actually pull a psycho on us. They make us think that she is going to live and be, you know, the protagonist of the film, fighting off the antagonist and surviving. And that's not a big spoiler because it's just, it, it happens within the first 15, 20 minutes of the film. Uh, if maybe a little bit longer, it has been a while since I've seen this from start to finish, but it's not a big spoiler. It's something you're going to find out very early on, so that's why I feel comfortable telling you about that. Uh, and that leads to the next point. People start killing off his patients, uh, and he's trying to figure out who throughout the entire film. Who's doing it? Why are they doing it? Um, the, uh, the person is a woman, appears to be a woman, with a straight razor just absolutely destroying these uh, his patients uh, and he, he you know he's terrified throughout the film of why they're doing this and he teams up with another female who actually turns out to be the lead in the film uh, and they try to figure out who the killer is and why they are killing off all of these women uh, or why they have killed off one in particular woman also the um, the new female lead uh, teams up with the woman's son who was murdered so it's it's it all comes together at the uh, you know at the end of the film and it explains what's really going on and it shows who the killer is going into it I knew who the killer was it was no big surprise to me maybe if I wouldn't have been spoiled then I would have known uh, but even so I have a pretty strong eye for things like this and I feel like even if you don't it's fairly obvious with this one who the killer is you might have your doubts here and there about who it actually might be but uh, it, let's just say it's, it's pretty crazy. Uh, the killer is a pretty weird, sadistic, crazy person within the film. Uh, an actor who really showed his acting capabilities within this movie. Uh, and just a great horror film, thriller, suspense, whatever you want to call it, slasher. It definitely has slasher elements because we don't know who the woman is. We really don't see this woman. We see the straight razor and we see her cutting people killing people, uh, the one woman in particular, uh, and we don't really know what who she is or the, or the purpose, so that to me is a slasher if you really don't know who's behind the mask, uh, or, you know, there's somebody with a mask chasing and killing people for no good reason, and then it builds up throughout the film to actually explain to you why it's going on. Um, it's not... I really enjoy the film. Would I say that it's fantastic? No, but it definitely has a unique style to it. It feels very similar to Black Christmas to me, uh, not in terms of setting, acting, or directing, but in terms of vibe, the vibe of this film. It feels like a very suspenseful slasher. I mean, if you look back at films uh, like Psycho, which is said to have created the slasher genre, uh, it's, you know, 
Alfred Hitchcock was never really known as a horror director. You know, we look at John Carpenter, Toby Hooper, Wes Craven, and we're like, those are horror directors. Like, well, that's what we know them by. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock was looked at as like a thriller director. And that's what this feels like. It, it does have, like I said, slasher elements. There is some, a brutal kill uh, with the straight razor. Really cool. And the aspect of not knowing who the killer is and why they are doing it uh, just adds up to be a slasher to me. I felt like uh, it was a blend of all these different elements and it made a pretty good horror film. Uh, or might I even say, uh, I wouldn't say it's fantastic. It's not one of my favorites of all time. But it is, it's a good horror film, really, as I enjoyed it from start to finish. Uh, so, yeah, the plot was really good. So we talked about the plot. Let's talk about the directing a little bit. Brian De Palma, like I said, well-known director, nothing else to say. It's going to be good. Uh, you know, he, he had dipped his toes in this type of genre before with thriller, suspense, horror, and it worked. It was just good. Great, great director for a great film. And I believe it was actually written and directed. Maybe not. Yeah, written and directed by Brian De Palma. So, love the directing. Directing gets a 5 out of 5 for me. Loved it. Uh, acting, everyone did good. Michael Caine, Andrew Dickinson, Nancy Allen. Great cast. Seeing Michael Caine play the role that he played as the Doctor was really, really cool. And then seeing where his role took him from start to finish. Awesome. Great. Uh, so, directing, acting was good. Love the vibe. I've already talked about the vibe a little bit by telling you that it felt very similar to Black Christmas, and it feels like a, it's like a, how should I say it? It's like a souped up slasher. It's like a prettied up slasher. If that's, if you can understand what I'm saying, that it's like, it feels like it's been painted up, and it feels very kind of fancy in different ways. And the different shots that are taken, I really like those. And just the plot in itself, uh, the shots that, uh, the plot, plot was great, uh, but the directing, the shots that were taken, uh, cinematography, everything was really, really spot on within this movie, and it went for a vibe, you know, this could not be a dirty, sleazy, uh, you know, type of gritty uh, horror slasher that a lot of films are, this was not the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, not making a comparison to it in any way, because it doesn't even stand next to it, it can't. Uh, but, you know, it, it's it's one of those kind of painted up uh, top horror films or slashers, suspense, thriller, whatever you want to call it. But me personally, I really, really enjoyed Dress to Kill. I'm going to go 4.5 out of 5. Enjoyed it a lot. Wasn't my favorite, but I do... Um, wasn't my favorite of all time, but I do really enjoy it. And I've watched it multiple times since I have bought this Blu-ray, so... Great release, uh, and for a great horror film. So yeah, it, it really just depends if you see it as a slasher. I do. I see very various elements to create a blend. Uh, you know, so I see slasher elements. So that's why I chose to review Dress to Kill. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. That is my review over Dress to Kill. Comment down below and tell me what you think about this uh, horror film. Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? I'm curious to know everyone's thoughts and opinions. Stay tuned, guys. Tomorrow, Chris Brock will be reviewing a slasher of his choice, and that will continue throughout the week with all of our members. There are some great slasher films picked to be reviewed this week, so stay tuned for that. I'm the Jay Sloan. You just watch Late Night Frights. Comment, subscribe, and as always, guys, keep it horror. Peace.